Hi, everybody. Hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, we're going to do the last new concept for this unit. Um, and it should be a review to things that you've done in the past, okay? But we're going to start by doing triangle proportionality, setting these up, and solving for the side that is um, indicated. So go ahead and let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Go ahead and find IJ for this one and WX for this one. All right, so our new, last new thing is Pythagorean Theorem. And like I said, this should be a review. It's something you should have seen prior to right now. And this is uh, only for right triangles, okay? So Pythagorean Theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So hopefully you've seen that, okay? Remember, squaring something is not the same thing as multiplying by two. So you need to use the little squared button on your calculator. It looks like this. Oh, it might be a little bit too, too hard to get to. But it looks like an X with a squared or an X with a box. Okay, that's the button that you need to be using. So this is the general formula, a squared plus b, b squared equals c squared. Leg plus leg equals hypotenuse, okay? C is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, and it is directly across from the 90-degree angle. Here are some cheat formulas. So if it asks you specifically for a or b or c, this is the formula that you would use, the square root of a squared plus b squared, or the square root of c squared minus a squared. So if you are a person who takes notes or takes pictures of notes, I would highly recommend having this, okay? And again, the square root button looks like that. I need to find a way to make it a little bit easier to zoom in on that. So we're gonna just go through some practice. We're gonna do practice solving for C, practice solving for A or B, and then you're just gonna get started. So this should be very fast and straightforward for you. So this first one is solving for C. I'm actually going to pull up this right here. So I'm going to move it to the side just a little bit so that we can see our triangle. And let me actually get this working. It doesn't seem to be on. All right, so here is our triangle. We are solving for C. We'll just call this A and B. It doesn't honestly matter. A and B are interchangeable. So we're going to say 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to X squared, which is the same thing as C. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. And then X squared. 36 plus 64, I'm going to move this over here because I'm running out of space, is 100. And square rooting, the square root of 100 is 10. So this side right here is 10. Again, make sure you're not timesing by 2, but you're squaring. That means it's by itself. That's why 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. And that's how you get this answer, 10. 10 squared or 10 times 10 is 100. So that's how you know your answer. Okay, so here is another one. Let me erase this one so that we can get started on this next one. And again, we are going to use the exact same formula. So let me pull this up, okay? So we are just going to call one of these A and B. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to just say 15 squared plus 18 squared is equal to X squared. 15 squared is 225. 18 squared is three, whoop, 324. So 324 plus 225 is 549. Square root, sorry about the bell, square root that, and we get something that's called 3 times the square root of 61. Just turn that into a decimal, and it is 
approximately 23.4. Okay, rule of thumb is try to keep it to one decimal place and just estimate, okay? Um, so that is how you do C. So I'm going to have you guys try this one. Okay, you're going to try this one. It's almost like the last one, but this one's 8, not 18. So solve for X and find what your answer should be. Okay, so this next one is going to be solving for A or B. It doesn't matter because in Pythagorean theorem, they are interchangeable. So if it asks you for A or B, you can pretty much um, put in one for the other. It's not going to change your overall answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this up. This one, if we go back to this cheat, we're going to use one of these formulas where we're going to have to subtract from C squared. Okay, subtract from C squared. So I'm going to just set it up with Pythagorean theorem. And doing that, I'm going to get 6 squared plus X squared equals one, 100, yes, but 10 squared. I was jumping ahead, 10 squared. So 6 squared is 36. 10 squared is 100. We would subtract 36 and get x squared equals 64 and square root to find that x is equal to 8. Okay, so it's not much different than finding c. You just subtract instead of add at the beginning. So here's another one. Let me get my board ready. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Notice the X on this one is on a different part of the triangle, but it doesn't matter because we're interchangeable with X and or with A and B. So we're going to just say X squared plus 15 squared equals 21 squared. X squared plus 225 equals 21 squared is 441. We're going to subtract 225. X squared is equal to 441 minus 225, which is 216. Square root that. And again, we get like 6 square root of 6, but we're going to simplify that into 14.7. So this is 14.7. Seven. Now, remember back when we were talking about triangles and we said that two sides have to add to be bigger than the biggest side? So keep that in mind when you're doing this. That would help you know if you did something wrong. For example, this side you know has to be bigger than six. Excuse me. Has to be bigger than six because 15 plus six is equal to 21. So if you got something smaller than six, in your brain, you should think, I did something wrong. That cannot be the case. All right? So make sure you're using that check as you're working through to, um, to keep you yourself uh, ready for what it should be looking like. All right, so now we're going to practice this one. <coughs> Go ahead and solve for X. Alrighty, so now we're just going to talk about what happens in a more complex uh, Pythagorean theorem problem. You're still going to do it the exact same way, but there might have to be a little bit of thought that goes into it. So I'm going to just draw this down really quickly. And the one thing that you need to recognize in this situation is what parts are which thing. So the one thing you need to recognize is that this right here is actually a 90 degree angle. This is C, so then this is A or B, and this is the other one to be able to solve it. So once you figure that out, then it's the exact same thing. It is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, it's the exact same thing, but sometimes it's not super obvious. So that's why I wanted to pull this up and let you guys see it. Okay, here's another one. Okay, you have to kind of look and see, and you're going to have to do a little bit of work with this part of the triangle first, and then be able to work on this part of the triangle, because this has an A 
and a C so you can find X. Once you have X, you have one, two, and so then you can find that one. So I wanna just kind of work through this one with you. to show you what I mean, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is this part of the triangle, this triangle part right here, because that is the one that I know. So I would say nine squared plus X squared equals 12 squared. 81 plus X squared equals 144. Subtract 81 x squared is equal to 144 minus 81, which is 63. So x is going to be equal to 7.9. So now x is 7.9. Now I can do the other part of the triangle because now I have two pieces of it. So I can say... 7.9 squared plus y squared equals 11 squared. And I can go through and I can solve that. Okay, so just because it looks a little bit daunting at the beginning does not mean that you can't break it down and solve it. Okay, so then the last one is for you guys to try, woo, I can get it to go. There we go. So try this one. We're just going to solve for X, but in order to solve for X, you have to find this first. So go ahead and see if you can do a two-step problem to be able to solve for X. Okay, so that is it for Pythagorean Theorem. You guys have an exit ticket today. There are three questions and you need to score a three out of three for credit. If you are not understanding this or you're not sure how to use your calculator, I'll tell you if you're using your cell phone, you're going to have to turn your cell phone calculator to the side to be able to get a square root. So if this is what it looks like, if you turn your calculator sideways, all of a sudden you have way more options and you will have one that shows a square root. Okay, it's like a little check mark. So if you guys have any questions, let me know and have a fantastic day.